It is possible that we store an object along with its state into a file and then again from another program we can get that object back again along with its state from that file. Well this might sound confusing but it is possible and for that purpose we're going to have to use a mechanism called serialization. What is serialization? A serialization is a mechanism where an object can be converted into a byte stream and in order to be able to convert an object into a byte stream or to be serializable the class has to implement the serializable interface. Only then the objects of this class will qualify to be serializable. In this class, this is a very simple class where we have one constructor and we are setting the state of one of these variables in here by sending an argument to this constructor, in this case it's color and we're going to use this method to get what we have set in here. We also have a method and that just simply going to show this message barking. What I did in this file is I have created an object of that class and I had set the state to brown. The color of that dog is going to be brown. And the next thing that I'm going to do is going to create a file output stream. We're going to use file output stream to put all the binary data of the object into a text file and in order to convert the object into the binary data we're going to have to use this class object output stream and its constructor will take in this object the object of file output stream and using this object we're going to call this method write object and we're going to send the object that we want to serialize as an argument to this method Doing so, the object along with its state will be converted into uh, a binary form and will be stored inside this text file. And finally, we're going to close the stream. By the way, in our examples, we, we're not using the try-catch block. Uh, the example that I've demonstrated you is definitely not a good practice. You're going to have to use the try-catch block. It's just that the number of lines of code will increase if I introduce try-catch blocks. Let me show you how the class looks with try-catch blocks. Here it is. This has increased the lines of code almost doubled. Anyway, let's run this program and we should have this file created. So here it is. Let's see what's inside it. You would not understand anything. Well, basically, the text editor, Windows text editor, tried to convert all those binary data into characters and this is how it ended up. But what you're seeing is essentially the dog object in a textual format. Isn't that wonderful? Now let's go back. I have another program which is object input stream and as you would guess we're going to create an object input stream to read the object binary data back into the program and then we can use that object along with its state. So in here that's exactly what I did. Using file input stream I'm reading the data from the file and then I'm sending this as a parameter to the constructor of object input stream and using this object I'm going to just call the method inside it which is read object and I need to typecast it back to the desired object. This is dog object so here is the class name and now we can call the method inside it as well as we can also get the state that we had set when we serialized the object. So what we have done here is we have deserialized that object and we're able to play with that object. Let me run this program. Awesome! Isn't that wonderful? The concept of serialization and deserialization will come into picture when we talk about Java 2 Enterprise Edition where you would deal with web applications etc. But it's a long way ahead. I'm just trying to tell you the significance of using the streams for dealing with objects. Hope that makes sense. See you in my next video.